come on the Grand Union Canal on a section that is run by Luton Angling Club. And it's called uh, Ivanhoe. So this place has some club matches and it has normally has a round of the summer league that's fished around here. It's a really nice boundary for a bit of everything. So there's skimmers, you can catch skimmers and bream, they're normally the other side of the bridge down the far end, but there was a club match there yesterday, so we've come up here on the boats today. But it's one of the areas which sort of is pretty consistent for roach, which are, you know, becoming a bit harder and harder to find on the Grand Union around this area. It's sort of dominated by skimmers and big fish. So as you can see, it's a real, it's a real bright day not brilliant conditions for big fish so i do when i feed i'll explain what i'm going to do but i'm going to try and target big fish straight away as in skimmers really and that is what you need to do in a competition on on the grand union because these skimmers they're the, the framing weights are dominated by big fish and they show straight away so when i started fishing around here when i was young there wasn't so many big fish and chop worm wasn't the method that anybody used really. And we'd always start down the inside for little fish, but now it's the opposite. Start across looking for an early skimmer or two. If you're on a pile, you know, you keep catching them and you, and you can get, you know, 20, there's been 30 pound bigger weights this year in known pegs. But on a run of the mill peg, you might catch a couple of skimmers early and then get your head down for a small fish, which you can do here because there are roach here. So that's sort of what we're going to do. We could have gone like to a marina or, you know, there's a peg at three locks up the road where there's a great big bush where they've been catching sort of 20, 30 pound of bream every time. We could have gone to a peg like that, but I didn't really want to because A, I never draw them in matches and B, it's not really relevant to 90% to of the pegs that you will draw or fish in a, in a match, whether it be a club match or an open match or a, or a league match. So I just thought we'd come to a run of the mill peg and show you the approach of combining sort of maybe some skimmers and then some roach afterwards and perch and we can always try for a bonus fish later on if we want to again. So just preparing the ground bait for the uh, canal session. So I've got some roach ground bait here and here I've got some grilled hemp and what I'm going to do I've just bring I've been doing this recently on a few matches where I've been fishing for roach I just bring a thermos of hot water I like to do it you know, like 10 minutes before I'm going to mix the ground bait and I just pour the hot water onto the grilled hemp and that helps to ensure that it sinks because I don't want it too active and it just releases the oils a bit and uh, then I'll mix that into my ground bait to give it an added hemp sort of uh, inclusion bait which obviously roach love and, and small skimmers as well so little way of boosting your ground bait. It's been soaking 10 minutes. I found that you can pick that up in the camera so you can see it's released a lovely milky sort of hemp liquid. It's all soaked up, sinking. Brilliant attractor, smells really lovely and roasted. So in the ground bait, I like to have sort of like a liquid attractor. And, uh, recently I've been using molasses. I use a spotted fig one. Nice, really thick don't need loads of it because it has actually got quite a strong flavour. So I'll just put a little dollop in. See how it is. Really what happens with that is when the ground bait's on the bottom, that actually leaks out the ground bait and creates attraction around the ground bait and attracts fish from a distance. So molasses is in, roach ground bait is in. I'll add me a uh, gone for a natural coloured ground bait today because the bottom of the canal isn't black it's like a sort of colour of sand you can see it in the edge of the shallower areas when it's a bit clearer so a jet black ground bait would actually uh, stand out the the ground. so I'm just going to use natural ground and I'm going to mix that quite heavy I don't think we're going to get loads of boats today, well we won't do it, it's in the week. But I like to have quite a heavy ground bait, so sort of when the boats come past, it doesn't wash it away too easily. 
just go through the bait I've got for today. Obviously, I've showed you the ground bait, mixed it up, just a standard brown roach mix. Then, to complement that, standard canal fare, squats and pinkies. We'll see uh, how we go, what's the best way to feed the squats, but they are an essential bait. So I've got about a pint of pinkies, which I'll never use, and a pint of squats, which I might use. Got some dead maggots and pinkies just mixed together to put in the ground bait and to put on the hook for skimmers. Got a pint of hemp, which I cooked yesterday. Not bad stuff, prefer to use uh, hemp that I cook myself, really. I've got a pint of casters, which I'll never use that many, but that's what I've got. And some worms, of course, which you need on every canal. I've got some lobworms in my bag, and normally I bring a few red worms as well, but I didn't bother today because it's so hot, I wanted to save them for the weekend because I've got some matches coming up. So that's my bait, that's all I've got. Uh, won't use less than half of it. And uh, now we'll go through the, uh, the tactics where I'm going to feed. We're going to start the session trying to target some quality fish. Not sure whether we catch any or not, but this is canal fishing, this is what it's like. So in matches, you need to try and catch a skimmer or two early. So the way I'm going to feed, I'm going to, I've had a plumb up, and it's all about the shelves on canals. You always fish just coming out of the deep water and going up into the shallower water for, for roach and, and skimmers usually, especially for roach. So I've plumbed up, and I'm going to have a ground bait line at 11 and a half metres, where it's coming out of the deeper water. It's probably, I would say, 10 inches shallower than the middle so I'm on the shelf but it's not a steep shelf it's quite nice and the reason there's two reasons for that distance one is I'm on the shelf and got on the start of the shelf or just going up it and if I'm going to fish squats which I'm going to and pinkies I need to be able to loose feed the squats where I'm fishing which is obvious isn't it but if I decide to fish at 13 meters and there's a bit of wind and I can't loose feed there I'm, it's a waste of time, isn't it? So I'm, I might just pot ground bait and squats, or like I say, I might loose feed, but I need that option. So that's why, generally, I don't like to go past 11 and a half metres for my squat line. So that's one line. Then I'm gonna go another full joint, so 12 and a half metres, plus a short extension, puts me just on 13 metres exactly. And that's just off the boat, and there I'm gonna pot in neat chop worm and caster and that is obviously for better fish. I might just catch little perch there or an odd roach. I might catch some bigger fish, I don't know. But that's, that's my two lines across. And we're gonna keep it simple today. I'm gonna to feed a bit of bait down the inside for later on, but we're gonna start on the ground bait with big maggots. Then we'll probably go and chop worm and turn the ground bait line into a, into a, a roach line. going to feed my ground bait line at 11 and a half metres so first decision is how much ground bait to put in. If I was on a venue where there was no hardly any roach feeding and I was just hoping to catch an odd skimmer I'd probably only put two balls in because I don't want bait everywhere in that situation but here I'm hoping sort of I feel like I'm going to catch more roach than skimmers really so I want to put a bigger bed in at the start so what I'll do I'll measure out two three four balls, four big handfuls of ground bait. I think that's quite a positive. I could put more than that in, I could put twice as much as that in, but I think that's a sort of middle of the road, hoping for a decent session. And what I'm gonna put into that at the start is not a lot, just a pinch of dead pinkies and maggots. But you can see there's literally just an odd maggot in the bait there. And I think I will just put in a, just a taster of worms, just literally tiny little bit because my thinking is if some hand sized skimmers or better fish come straight on that I haven't got like loads of squats and pinkies everywhere and I think in that situation you've got more chance of bumping fish and less chance of catching them so I'm going to start off like positive ground bait but negative particles so on the far line I'm going to feed neat worms and casters um, and the sort of volume I'm going to put in that's a 250 mil pot a quarter of a litre so you can see there's probably, there's less than 100 mil of worms there, but that's quite a lot of worms. One or two big bits in there still need chopping. Mince them right up. 
And then in there, I'll just put, I don't know, 100 casters, just a taster of dead pinkies and maggots. So that's no ground bait, so a completely different sort of way of feeding, and hopefully we'll catch some better fish on that. Okay, so this is first drop in, going in on the dead maggot and a pinky, dead pinky, 0.3 side wide chop to an 18 to 010. See, see what I catch over this ground bait. Five elastic, so sort of middle of the road, gives me a chance. There we go. Stamp brooch, I'd say. Or is it a skimmer? That's a skimmer. I felt like a roach when I hooked it. So there you go. Perfect demonstration. First fish, hand sized skimmer. We're going again on the same bait. Just got a little sort of tapered, strung out shot in pattern. We'll just lay it in on top of those balls of ground bait. Dotted right down, but it's got a reasonable tip in this, this float, so it's, it's very stable, wire stem. Big roach. Well, big roach, a decent roach. But these are the fish we're looking to catch straight away. They might not feed for long. Been caught before, that one. Okay, so third, third fish. Had a skimmer and a roach and lost a skimmer, which probably found us. Rumper, as someone I know would say. Pristine. This is your job. So I've started on the ground bait, like I said I was going to, with dead maggot and a dead pinky cocktail. Size 18 hook to 010, give me a chance of getting any big fish out. Five elastic, set quite pingy, and a 0.3 side wide chop, which is, this is the job the float's designed for. I've gone in and caught a small, a hand size skimmer. Lost a hand size skimmer, unfortunately. I think it was fouled hook, there was some slime on the line. And then I've caught three or four real nice roach. Good quality ones. Just showing what I said, just targeting the better quality fish that are there by not putting in too many particles in the ground bait and attracting small fish. There's a boat coming now. Um, then I've switched from, uh, bites have slowed up pretty quick and I've changed to just a worm head, head of a dendrobina about five mil long, five, eight mil long. And I've had a couple of two or three sort of, still nice roach actually, like two, three, out, three ounces probably. And this fish now, which feels like a perch. And I'm just basically picking off what's come over those initial balls of ground bait before something happens to, to sort of 
make it slow down like this boat for example might or just catching the fish will sort of will spook the shell of quality fish that has come straight in. It's one of the bizarre things of canal fishing that these quality fish, they zoom in, you catch them and then they disappear and sometimes you never see them again for the rest of the day. I guess they just stop feeding and, and spook but it happens on most canals well, on the Grand Union, certainly. So I've had a nice initial hit of fish. This boat's gonna come past, and then I'm probably gonna go across on the neat chopworm and caster line and see what I can pick off from there. But before I start feeding squats and pinkies and more ground bait on this line, when I come back to it, what I will do is just use one of my lighter sort of squat rigs with a pinky on and see if I can get another run of fish on that just by scaling down before I refeed. So I catch what I can on this, what I would call my big fish rig. When it dies, go straight over on my chop worm line, see what's there, and then come back to this line and start looking to turn it into a roach line. But before I do that, I will go on my light rig and just see what I can catch by scaling down. So this is sort of how you would spend the first, probably 45 minutes of the match you know, trying to nick fish off both lines and judge judge what the peg's worth, really, and how you're going to approach it. So I've caught some fish off my ground bait on big maggot or worm heads on my initial little flurry of bites, quality fish, and that's dried up, and also we've had two boats go through. So I've pushed over onto my chop worm line. Decent chunky perch wrapped round the line by the look of it, that's it. So my last three fish have been perch and the silver fish have backed off already. some worms in. Another fish worth catching. Oh, and hooked itself. So after moving across to the chop worm line and uh, catching those fish, I came back down to the back down to the uh, ground bait line, hadn't fed anything after the start, and I just switched to, I switched to a 0.3 punch with an 18 to 07, an IM80 Hydra hook, and uh, I caught another one of those nice big roach, two or three little hybrids, some other roach, the perch are sort of gone from this line, and I had another nice run of fish, probably caught at least a pound and a half, pound and three quarters of fish, I would say. And then that faded. So I topped it up with ground bait. Haven't loose fed, just topped it up with ground bait. And I went back on my chop worm line, caught two more little perch, but there obviously wasn't a lot of fish there. So I topped that up with worms and came on back onto this line on the ground bait. So only like five minutes after I'd put the ground bait in. And, and, and I've scaled down again the rig. The 0.3 didn't seem right with the bulk, so I've gone on a 0.2 punch, strung out, and I changed to a 22 IM510, which is a long shank silver hook, very, very sharp. And I've been nicking fish on this rig over this ground bait. When it faded, I went back on the worms, caught a nice hybrid, some more perch, and then I've topped that up and come back on the ground bait line again, which I had topped up. So basically, I sort of top a line up, leave it, switch to the other line, 
when, I've, when that's dried up, top it up and come back to the, the original one. So I'm just bouncing off the two spots, building a net of fish. More perch over the chop worm, more silverfish over the ground bait. And I'll show you in a minute how I've topped up and what I've topped up with and, and the reason for that and the sort of two little different scenarios that you can be in which tell you what decision to make, whether to lose feed or to ground bait. So when it comes to refeeding or feeding in general on the squat ground bait line at 11 metres, sort of got two choices, sort of generalising and keeping it basic. One is to pot in more ground bait with particles in it, and the other one is to loose feed. If you know the venue, you might know before the match or before the practice session which is better. But sort of today I've caught some nice fish straight away. I've got a straight away a feeling that the fishing's going to be good. So I decided to top up with uh, ground bait. So what I generally do is get some hemp, put a lot of squats and pinkies and a bit of hemp in my ground bait and make it quite wet and make a ball like that, just a one-handed ball. And then I like to put a bit of loose ground bait with no particles on the top, like that. So when I put that in, I get the cloud off the loose ground bait get the hemp that sinks to the bottom and makes a little bed and the ball of ground bait in the middle full of particles. Obviously there's already some bait there from when I fed at the start. What happens then is you get a run of fish, when the bites peter out you do it again. Now if you do it and it doesn't work then that's a pretty good sign that you need to loose feed, that the fish don't want more ground bait. If you do it and you get a good run of fish and they're a reasonable size and you're happy, just keep repeating that process through the day and you can even count your fish so you can, you can put the ground bait in, go on it, say catch eight, nine, 10 fish in maybe 15 minutes or however long it takes. When it fades, put another pot in. Count the fish again and you might realise that, oh yeah, when I get to about seven, it's already starting to fade. Then I sort of eke it out to 10 and then feed again. And it gives you a real good feel. you like in sort of contact with your peg and, 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 uh, and how you need to feed it. So you just need to sort of think about what you're doing Feed regularly. If you don't feed, you won't catch, so you need to feed. Especially when there's boats coming through, that's a great time to refeed with ground bait. Even if you're loose feeding, that can be an opportunity to put some more ground bait in when a boat goes past. So try with ground bait. If it doesn't work, loose feed. Simple. So this is a great opportunity to put some more ground bait in. As a boat goes past, creates a bit of disturbance. You can sneak a ball in. Then you can either go straight on it or try your other line and come back to it when it's settled down a minute. I'm going to go over on worms, I think. So I've gone back on the chop worm line again after resting it, refeeding it and resting it. First fish is a decent... It's a skimmer, little skimmer. It's important to keep dripping those worms in because they don't... Not being in ground bait, they can wash away and the fish can eat them and you end up with an empty peg. So every time you come off it, not as much as a put in at the start, but a little palm full. And it's great because I've got a line there with no ground bait and my line closer in with ground bait. So I've got two different, totally different feeding sort of strategies. And Therefore, I can catch different fish. You know, the, the fish that don't want to be over ground bait will go over the worms, and the, and the smaller fish that do like to be over ground bait, I can target on the shorter line. So I've got chances of catching different fish. So we'll just go through two or three of the rigs that I've used today in detail. The first one is the one I started on which is like the chop worm, dead maggot rig for skimmers and better roach. Five elastic, sort of middle of the road elastic. Got 014 main line and a side wide chop. Quite a round body, very stable. 
reasonable tip. I'm not sure what diameter that is now, I can't remember, but so it's quite stable, but big enough to fish little bits of worm and dead maggots. Wire stem, and I've got that coming down. This is actually one of my ready-made rigs. It's got a little tapered shot in pattern and some trimming shot. And then I've come down to a, a Hydra 701 in an 18 to 010 fluorocarbon. That's like a swept shank hook, a bit like a feeder style hook. So that's the rig I started on, fishing a dead maggot and dead pinky or a tiny worm head, looking for the better fish. I used that across and on my short line, I just adjusted the depth. So the second rig I used was, I set a couple of these up, a side wide punch, slim body, hollow tip, wire stem, again strung out with some trimming shot. And on this, I used a IM510, which is a long shank nickel hook, very, very sharp, in a 22, which uh, was to 07. And uh, yeah, that's been a good, that's sort of been the best rig for the smaller fish on the drop, over the ground bait line, obviously. That was coupled with a three elastic through the whole top kit. And my last rig that I'll show you is a different float. This is a Siwai Hemp. This is in a point one with a two elastic just through the one and the two of my pole. Thinner main line on both this rig and the last one, 011 or 010. Little strung out shot in pattern. These are number 12s. And this one was down to an IM5, uh, an IM80, sorry, in a 20 to 07. And this is sort of more of a fishing off on the drop, even more on the drop and just off the bottom. And the round bodied hemp float, again, it holds well if there's a bit of skid, bit of ripple, despite being a very light float, it's easy to control. So that's me uh, three main rigs for the day. Grilled hemp, it's all about the grilled hemp. <laughs> So the session's come to a close. Lovely net of quality canal fish. Look at that. Stamp roach. Hybrids. Plenty of little perch, an odd skimmer. Not loads of skimmers, but there's one or two in there. Yeah, I'd say just over double figures, not bad. We've been filming off and on. We've been there about four hours. So it shows you the type of tactics you can use on the canal to catch a nice net of fish. Obviously a two-pronged approach, which sort of one line complemented the other well. And I uh, hope you've enjoyed the video and check out the channel for more videos to come.